everybody, and welcome back to Base Paths and Brewskies. Today is episode 11, and we'll be discussing the Battle of the Border. And it is we today, as you can see, uh, if you're watching the video. Otherwise, if you're just listening, I have Dom Lanfear visiting again today as a guest host. If you want to say hi and let them know if you're drinking anything. I know you got a new headset set up, so it's pretty sweet. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, what's up, guys? I uh, just got my PlayStation headset rocking today, and... Ooh. Right now, just sipping on some water. Bedtime coming up. Can't be, <laughs> can't be doing too much. <laughs> yeah, good call. Uh, good call. I'm gonna talk about my my beer of the pod here, which is not necessarily a beer, uh, maybe a West Virginia beer. I got the uh, the Old Smoky Tennessee Moonshine uh, Apple Pie flavor. I'm down to about half a pint left. Um, gonna give this a nice little swig. <sighs> oh yeah, oh yeah, nice. All right, let's jump right into this twin series. All right. Game one, game one, obviously good. Good guys win three two. Yeah. Overall, it was a pretty like well played baseball game. Uh, we can dive a little bit into the box score here as well. So, I mean, you had. You had a lot of guys uh, getting on base for the Brewers, whether that was walks or hits, you know, seven hits, five walks. Uh, pitching was good. Good start from Junis. Uh, only four innings. And I think that was kind of a intentional thing. Uh, yeah. He was dealing with some uh, shoulder stuff, I believe, coming out of camp. So it wasn't he wasn't taken out after the fourth inning for any kind of performance reason. It had more to do with um just uh, his his load management, his work management. So, I don't know what did yeah. what you think of your first impressions of this game, Dom. I think came out hot. I'm trying to remember. Mm-hmm. This was already yesterday. A game they had bases loaded in the, or they had two on in the first or something like that, or the second nope. inning. I'm trying to remember. Uh, put up three runs early, uh, but after that, it just kind of felt like they couldn't quite get anything else going. You know, I'd love to see more run production down the stretch. But I think overall, it was a good home opener. Um, obviously, I'd love to see Junis go more than four. But with the shoulder stuff he's been dealing with, you know, I get Pat's want to – Pat wants to ease him into more uh, longer leash, per se. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. I think, I mean, looking at the box score of the Twins pitching, uh, when you have – Alcala and Jay Jackson coming in for four innings of work. I'm Mm -hmm. hoping that we can score more than zero runs against them next time. Uh, I mean, that was kind of disappointing. I know Alcala got hit somewhat hard in terms of base runners. I think he got out of like a bases loaded or, or two on jam. Yeah. Um, He, he had, uh, he got, he only had one hit on him, but he walked two guys. So, I mean, he must've, he he was in some trouble at a point. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember what that was, but yeah, they got no runs out of that. And that's... Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, a win's a win. So you'll take it in any, you know, shape, size, form, however, it, however it comes to you. But I think for me, the craft brew player of the game, uh, you can, you can chime in if you have a different guy, but I went with Bryce Durang. I think he's just off to such a hot start and uh, he seems to really enjoy the home openers. Last year he had the home run on a opening day in the in Ampham field and he had another great performance drew a walk two hits i think he had like two stolen bases i want to say putting him at like six for the season yeah and he was he's really helping in the run production area which is not <laughs> what i really expected that's not really his role on the team but i certainly am uh, i'm open to getting you know an RBI a game from your eight hole player and a guy getting on base and swiping bags. So I don't know if you had a different craft guru player of the game, if you would like to maybe expand upon what you thought Bryce Trang did kind of going to give you the floor here. Yeah, I think compared to last year, he's just swinging a lot better. Like it looks like he may be able to be a decent producer at the bottom half of the lineup. Um, I'd say he's probably my player of the game too. I mean, two hits, and a stolen base in a game that was pretty low scoring, I think was a huge 
thing for us was a huge run producer. Um, the only other player that I'd maybe consider giving player of the game to would maybe be Reese Hoskins. That's just because he scored those two runs or two of those runs. But yeah, I'd say Bryce Trang is a good pick. I mean, he, he looks like a different player this year, honestly, so far. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, I've heard from interviews that his swing, he's focusing on just going up the middle, fundamental swing. I mean, that's kind of what you're taught. Uh, you know, right when you start playing the game, when you're hitting off the tee for the first time is just try and hit it straight up the middle. And it, it looks like that's what he's trying to do. I mean, he's not, you know, he's not swinging out of his shoes. That's not the type of player he is. So, I mean, he's putting bat to ball and, and good things will happen when that, yeah. when you're doing that. So, I mean, obviously they'll have cold streaks if when you're not, you know, a big power guy and, you know, you're hoping on just finding little gaps in the defense, but as of now, I was really up to this point of the season. I was super happy to see what he was able to do. Such a good fielder as well. And I think the other main point I'd like to hit on is just how good our bullpen was, how dominating uh, it really seemed when when you get to the Milner, Piam, Cerebe. I mean, we don't even have Devin Williams, and that's a scary looking, you know, crew coming at you seven, eight, and nine, and. I mean, it, if you look at the box score, only one strikeout between the three of them, but just really just shut down uh, pitching from them. And if, you, if you're a pitcher giving up zero runs, you're doing your job. So I, yeah. mean, I, I really like watching it. I don't know. Do you have a, a favorite that you've seen so far between those three or maybe a different guy that I'm not touching on that you'd like to shed some light on? Yeah, I think, I mean, yesterday, Paguero looked really good for me in the two innings he pitched. Uh, two innings. Uh, in three strikeouts uh, only gave up a run um, in one walk but I think he was lights out in that kind of long reliever role he played yesterday with Junis exiting after four innings um, let's see here and pull up his pitch stats um, you can go ahead though while I pull these up yeah I, I definitely think he did his job fill the role very well he's not coming into the season as a guy who is one of the main, you know, back end of the bullpen guys. But when you have someone who can come in and throw two innings like that, and I think that it, it, same can be said for what the Twins had as well with Alcala, Alcala, however you say that. I've never heard of this guy in my life. But uh, and then Jay Jackson. Um, I mean, they both came in and they pitched well. And when you have relievers that come in and throw multiple innings without giving up a run, that's you know, you're going to win some games doing that when the team, the other team isn't scoring late in the game. So if you had a little more to say about Paguero, uh, fire it out. Not as of now, I am <laughs> struggling to find any numbers right now. Um, yeah, he Maybe looked good. To pound yeah, no, he... shine, though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pound too much. You're yeah, I'll go falling over quick. by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I think you hit on the main points there that he he filled his role pretty much to perfection for maybe a guy that wasn't expected to be a huge impact out of the bullpen, but yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like we're kind of delaying talking about game two because of the result. So let's let's rip the band-aid off here and and slide over to game two. Unless you had anything else you wanted to throw out there that you saw from game one that impressed you, maybe concerned. Uh, really any feedback you had left um abner uribe is a stud dude um, he's ball, just willing right? to do it all uh, he's willing to put his body on the line for the outs yeah and, the, dude but, he, he almost ripped his groin yeah and that sucks if that would have happened but you know you love to see the hustle and i think that yeah. speaks to him as a player as a young player mm -hmm. and what he'll be to come i think he's going to be a superstar yeah at that yeah. closer or maybe if Devin comes back and isn't moved at the deadline or anything like that, I think he'll be a huge piece coming out of the bullpen as maybe a setup guy for Devin or somebody that can take some of those nights off when Devin's gone a couple games in a row closing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the celebration of putting the gun in the holster, I mean, that's very closer esque you know, having a signature thing like that and just the attitude he brings. But I mean, like you said, that hustle play, I mean, I, I think if 
either of us would have tried to make that stretch right now, like we would have seen our nuts hanging on the field uh, yeah. out, out of our pants and, and probably spilling out. But I mean, he, it, it kind of reminded me of like, not, I don't want to say young, but like early in his career, Bryce Harper, where it was just like, he just did whatever he could to win all out intense. Like the way he got up after that and was just staring down the runner, like that's an intense player. And, and that's not someone who I want to see with that attitude who also can throw a hard object at me at a hundred miles an hour. So, I mean, he's a, he's, he's a dude for sure. And I think we got a good one in him, but let's, uh, let's move on to game two here. Uh, didn't update the score in the, (laughs) in the, (laughs) in the video form. Um, the, the score ended up being seven to three, I believe. Um, not cool yeah <laughs> yeah it was uh um, one second shut my door here oh geez all right um yeah seven to three uh let's let's touch on the positives first here the craft brew player of the game i had jackson churio um hit his first career home run so props to him. I don't know if you saw, it was kind of cool. He came back to the dugout and they all gave him the silent treatment. That was pretty funny. Yeah. But I saw that. Yeah. That was neat. But otherwise, other than that, I mean, early on, it looked good. It looked very uh, similar to game one of the series, but in the end, it, it seemed like the bullpen just didn't have that same uh, dominating fashion of play like they did the day before. And uh, Yoel Piams really got hit hard. I mean, he came yeah. out and I think gave up like two back-to-back doubles like right away. And it just seemed like he couldn't really stop the bleeding. So I don't know. What, what do you think about the kind of the incongruency of Piams from game one to game two? Is that concerning you at all? Or do you think that's just, you know, the life of a reliever and kind of having a, a volatile position like that? I think it's just kind of the life of a reliever. Um, I think – not necessarily all his fault. I mean, when our starting pitcher only goes, you know, three and two thirds, and then the day before we also go four innings out of that starter, I think it puts a lot of pressure on that bullpen and those guys coming out to be flawless. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily all on him. Um, the would love to see some more offensive help i mean again another game where they scored early on but then after the fifth inning it kind of shut down Mm -hmm. yeah it seems like that that late scoring um it's almost like just really taking your foot off the gas pedal and kind of coasting and and just relying so much on the bullpen which you know it is a bit of a testament to how good that crew is coming out of the bullpen but it's not not some not a good way to uh, go about a 162 game season, you know, scoring three runs a game. So, yeah, yeah, my dog is licking the moonshine. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, sorry about that. I happen to have knocked over the moonshine a little bit, and she was starting to lick it up from the floor. So, <laughs> she'll, she'll sleep good. Now she's sneezing a bit. Um, yeah, uh, back to the game a little bit. Another player who kind of had been impressing me um, and didn't really show up as much today was Oliver Dunn. Uh, Really good in the field. He had a really nice play in game one. I think he had his first career hit in game one, or that might have came in the Mets series. But he, you know, he was off to a decent enough start, but he kind of slowed down this game and, you know, wasn't really that making that big of an impact, which coming in late in a game, it's hard to do, but... Yeah, yeah, he really didn't look too hot, but focusing on more of a positive as well. I mean, Sal Freelich put some put some balls in play, was able to get on base. I think he swiped a base or two, kind of that Terang style of play of, uh, you know, the 1900s ball where you just put the bat on the ball, get on base and try and steal your way around the bases. So uh, anything, any comments from you on you know, what the lineup did today? And uh, obviously looking at the box score, there's a lot of, uh platooning today so you know how do you think that fared for the the brewers i mean honestly if i was from my perspective it i would have nominated sal freelich for our player of the game in the game where not many people shined it seemed like he just loves to hustle he he beat out that um infield single right back to the pitcher early on that they challenged and 
ended up overturning that he was out. Um, you love to see that kind of hustle out of him. So that would have been my nominee for player of the game. I just think he's doing a lot of things right right now. And then mm-hmm. he had no hard hits off the bat, um, according to Baseball Savant. But I think those will come as he's doing the right stuff. He's got the right process when he goes up to bat. He's not chasing a lot of pitches. He's going up with a good mindset, and he's taking what he gets. So mm-hmm. um, other than that, I mean, bottom of the lineup, just overall very poor production. I think looks like one hit out of uh, yeah, the, the bottom, last like four guys. Yeah. I Three mean, guys. I, yeah. At a point that just won't really cut it if we don't have anybody at the bottom that can consistently yeah. hit. Um, but I think Bryce Trang will end up being that guy. Probably just an off day for him. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, uh, the thing with Bryce Trang and kind of a theme that I have noticed with some of the younger guys on the team, you know, your, your free licks, your Jackson Churios, the most impressive thing is kind of their approach at the plate. It's a very patient approach. Um, they don't seem to be offering it any bad pitches. I mean, they, they go up with a, a smart approach. They know what they're going to swing at. And, you know, you're going to strike out that you, with that approach sometimes as well. If you're, you know, only looking, looking for inner half pitches and, you know, the guy just throws you backdoor sl- stuff or, uh, I know like the pitcher today, uh, Paddock, he had kind of a change up, which is a bit like uh, a fastball change up mix that kind of made him a reverse split kind of pitcher. Um, so it almost, you know, for a lot of the right-handed guys, wasn't as much of a, uh, or excuse me, the left-handed guys wasn't as much of an advantage today. So I think that's where you maybe see where Terang kind of has an off day a bit, but I mean, that was the thing that I've noticed so far through five games of the year was that the younger guys just seem to do a really good job going up with a good approach. And it's honestly, uh, a player like Gary Sanchez, in my opinion, could you know, take, an, take an odor to. He he wasn't too hot today, and really when he's only on the team so that he can hit the ball hard, and, uh, you know, that just wasn't really happening. So it has, hasn't really happened to this point, considering he has a zero OPS. So um, let's move on to the pitching a little bit. Not super pretty group to touch on here. I personally really liked watching J.B. Bukowskis pitch. Uh, I was I, I don't know if you saw the tweet I put out earlier today. I was I was excited to see that he was called up. But the did you see why he ended up being called up for this game? Yeah, because of McGill. Uh, what getting yeah. food poisoning and fainting and then getting Dude, a what is that? I think my grandma did that when I was like eight. I've never heard Just, of anyone else doing that. It sounds like a Looney Tunes injury. To be yeah. honest, it's like how yeah. does how does that happen, <laughs> dude? I was like, like I I kind of just said it, uh, on my Twitter or X, I was like, you know, I I would love to see JB, but not in this fashion, like not not uh, due to injury or you know illness slash injury, but yeah. it, it it's kind of crazy because it was going so well, and then we got to Yoel Piams, who is usually the guy who you know is Mister Consistent, uh, a guy who I kind of expect to have a you know, sub three, at least ERA this season. And yeah, he really got rocked. And Bryce Wilson isn't necessarily a guy who's going to be a high leverage, uh, you know, pitcher out there. But just I think he's the one who ended up giving up that three run home run. Unless I don't I don't remember if Piomps did or not, but it was uh, the catcher Jeffers, I believe, who hit the three run shot. And man, that really just stamped the game. And it kind of took the the wind out of the sails. And that's what I talked about in the last episode with this team is, yeah, it's all fun and games when you take the lead in the first inning, second inning, and you have a commanding lead to start a good bullpen. But, you know, if you have a game where maybe your your front end bullpen guys, maybe the, the guys who aren't seeing high leverage situations and they're coming in, you know, you, you, you can't really have close games where you're only scoring three runs. So, I'd like to see how the team responds to adversity a little more because today there really was just no response. It was, you know, they got punched in the mouth one time and kind of just went and sat down on the bench. So I don't know. What did you think about the, the bullpen kind of, I don't want to say selling the game because the offense certainly wasn't helping late, but uh, you know, did you kind of feel that same 
same mood with the team of just the you know the the wind getting out of the sails the the air leaving the lungs it really just seemed like a shot to the to the team Yeah, I mean, overall, the entire game just kind of felt low energy, but then as soon as twins start tacking on runs early on, it kind of kind of felt the mood shifting. And then that seventh inning where they gave up five, it was like completely deflating. And it just, yeah, there's, after that, it just felt like there was no fight left. And maybe Yeah, it's just I'd have because to it's agree. a young group or a lot of young guys playing a lot you know maybe that they, they still got to get that big league experience of you know fighting back from big deficits like that um but yeah overall not necessarily concerning but you don't love to see it <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree. So uh, there's no, you know, it's not a red alert, but it's also, you know, it's not smooth sailings necessarily after this game. But yeah, I think that's uh, obviously this is one to learn from. They get a day off uh, Friday night. Seattle's rolling in. So uh, that's a good ball club and, and it'll be exciting to see. I don't know who they'll be facing in terms of pitching, but I think Luis Castillo threw either yesterday or it did today. So I don't think they will face him, which is nice, but that's a pretty solid team. They had a really good off season kind of underrated. So I'm excited to see what they can do there, but let's move on a little bit. Uh, my series awards, I'm going to kind of list mine off. I'll, I'll be a little brief about it and I'll let you maybe fill out, you know, where you would have maybe done something differently, but my, Overall MVP of the series, the base paths and brewskis MVP was Bryce Terang. I think uh, fielding, hitting, running, he kind of had it all this series. And it, it really started to show through that he is a ball player. He's a guy. And uh, if he can keep this up for 162 games, that it's, you know, he could really have a special season. I'm excited. But my barrel blasters, there wasn't a whole lot of offense, but I had to go with uh, Hoskins and Yelich. They both hit home runs. currently the only two brewers with home runs they're tied at two each so love to see some more long balls uh, only four home runs in five games is not typical brewer fashion of playing baseball but hopefully see some more power from some guys but uh, i love to see it from them uh, the crafty pitcher i had was jacob junis i think he just had a solid enough start uh, i believe he i think one run on uh yesterday's game and uh, there wasn't i mean the relief pitchers i could have listed all of them from game one but then they kind of lost their credit in game two so i i felt that junis was the most appropriate to receive the crappy Yeah. pitcher and uh every every series i come up with an individual unique award and this one was the iron man i think it's important to note that william Contreras has caught five out of five games so far he's taken every at bat Um, he was playing spring training and I know they, they think he's going to be a guy that is going to be behind the plate, you know, pretty extensively last year. We only had two guys catch all season and William Contreras had a huge bulk of that workload. And it doesn't look any different this year. So I think it's, it's fair to give him some credit for, uh, going out there every day, catching, you know, eight, nine innings, every single game. It's, it's pretty tough to do so. And he's doing it at extremely high level, which is awesome to see, but did you have anything you'd adjust or maybe comments you have on, on my awards here? Yeah, um, not really. I think those are all good. Um, Barrel Blaster, I love Christian Yelich. I mean, watching the games, even his outs the pet for the series were absolute rockets. Mm hmm Um, he's hitting, he looks great right now, and he's just hitting piss missiles all over the field. Um, Yep. see, I consider I'd consider giving the MVP to Reese Hoskins, just because I think in both games he was. Uh, obviously today hitting his first home run as a brewer as well as drawing a walk um, and then yesterday scoring those two runs um, Mm -hmm. I think he's just he's coming up in a lot of key spots and I think going forward he's going to be a guy we love seeing at the plate when there's guys on base like he just looks so comfortable um, and that's probably the experience he has from playing with the Phillies playing with the contender like them but other than that That's really the only, only thing that I saw on my end. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with you there. I mean, Hoskins certainly, we, we signed him for his run producing. And that's certainly what he's done, whether it's scoring himself or knocking in people. It, 
via the home run ball. So um, we'll move on to some questions for you. Oh, shit. So, <laughs> so who do you think will hit more home runs this season? Do you think it'll be Yelly or do you think it'll be Reese? That, that is a tough one because Christian Yelts is showing glimpses that he's like back to his pre knee injury mm-hmm. form. Um, and Reese coming off, it's it'll be it's tough to say. Um, with Reese coming off that ACL, I'd be interested to see how he is in you know July, August when it's late in the season, the kind of the dog days of the season, just grinding it out. You know, maybe that knee starts to aggravate him a bit with it being so recent. So I'm gonna say Yelich. I like it. I like it. I uh. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think, it, like you said, it's going to be close, but uh, only time will tell. Uh, do you think after these five games, the, a lot of hype behind Bryce Durang, do you think it's legit? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, looking at him at the plate now versus last year, he just looks a lot more comfortable and confident, and I think eventually that's going to lead to him raking. I mean, he's hitting balls hard all over the field and he's <laughs> uh, that, wow <laughs> and then obviously he's he's a real threat on the base pass too once he gets on he's not chasing too many pitches I think I think it's all legit and I think he's going to be a key piece as the season goes on he gets more experience to possibly even move up in the lineup with maybe some if any of the younger guys than him struggle, like Freelick or Churio or somebody goes down, something like that. Yeah, I, we're pretty parallel on our thinking there. And I think obviously sometimes it doesn't even get. Oh, I am running out of time. Uh, <laughs> if <laughs> I think his fielding, fielding goes unmentioned as well sometimes just because of how good it is and how consistent. So. Yeah, uh, I think that's important to mention, but uh, we'll kind of speed this up a bit here. Any quick thoughts on Pat Murphy at all? Um, just through a five game. I mean, he's kind of had a pretty consistent lineup uh, for righties and then, you know, uh, reverse splits and lefty guys. So are you liking that? Do you think the strategy is good? Uh, implementing some more bunting, stealing? What, what do you think? Yeah, I like him so far. I mean, it's nice to finally have a, manager who gets lineups out a couple hours before the game instead of five mm-hmm. minutes before the game. Um, yeah. I yeah. like how he, I like the aggressiveness he's, he's had with the guys on the base path and bunting kind of playing that small ball. Um, yeah. So I like him so far. He also, he just seems to be a guy that everybody in the dugout likes. And I think that's important when it gets later in the season, you know, once they start going through some slumps or whatnot, guys are going to respond to a manager that they actually vibe with instead of some robot. Yeah. Who are you? No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, I think I saw a picture comparing the press conferences of Pat Murphy and, and Craig council and just the energy he brings is just, uh, it, it's a lot more confident. It's a lot more, uh, baseball guy kind of feel and not as um, like you said a little more robotic a little more closed off uh, so I, I agree but and, and last question this will kind of be a quick one uh, do you think you're attending any games this year yeah uh, we already got tickets to one on Saturday night against Seattle um, nice they got that nice giveaway for the Giannis Brewers jersey so oh that's, that's right <laughs> yeah I'm excited for that um, and then probably we'll my girlfriend goes to school in Milwaukee, so whenever there's a cheap game and we're in town for the weekend, I'll probably stop at a couple games just because that's what I love about baseball is, you know, I can get tickets 10 minutes before for, like, 30 bucks and yep. get in get in and get out pretty fast. So, yeah, I'm sure later on in the summer. And hopefully if they make the playoffs, I'd love to go to a playoff game at yeah, Miller Park. Real. I mean, and Fanfield, my fault. Uh, <laughs> uh because I, I, 
I love watching playoff highlights and hearing the crowd energy from mm-hmm. any team. So I think it'd be awesome to experience in person. Um, I agree. So yeah, yeah. I uh, I think I'll be going to some too. I know my family was planning on going to some, and then I was kind of saving up in the Quick Trip Rewards app, uh, getting some free tickets. So, but yeah, I mean, it is nice that it's like you can go get tickets on like SeatGeek or whatever for like fifteen bucks if you want, and and just go hang out and watch a game if you're bored or around the area. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely have to line something up. So we'll, we'll figure something out here. But yeah. Uh, this is my uh, the trivia of the episode. So in the 495 games in franchise history against the Minnesota Twins, are the Brewers over or under 500 against the rivals from across the Mississippi? Oof. What, are you, what are you thinking? Without looking it up, I want to say over. I feel like we've always had a pretty good record. I'm going to say it's close, though. Okay. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll reveal it in the next episode. Uh I don't re- oh there was there was trivia for the last episode and it was which player outfielder had played for the Mets and Brewers or which one did not out of the four people I think it was Carlos Gomez Nori Aoki Niger Morgan and Keon Broxton and the answer was actually Niger Morgan he made his way around the league quite a bit but never ended up on the Mets so uh, that ended up being the correct answer I didn't didn't list it on screen but but that was the answer for that one up next obviously Seattle. You'll be going to uh, you'll be going to the game. I don't know if, if they won today, if they're playing, so I kind of left the records blank. But obviously the Brewers will roll in with a 4-1 and one record. Pretty solid. And I think the Mariners have been doing all right. Uh, they have a solid team, so I'm excited. I'm excited to see what you think about the, the game in person and seeing that team up close. But yeah. we'll wrap it up with our uh, B&B beer requests. If you have any beers you've been dying to try, if you have a go-to beer that I need to try, Comment or reach out on any of the socials listed below with what I should drink next. I'm going to take one last sip of the moonshine here. I'm not going to finish it because that that would be quite insane if I drank half a pint of moonshine in one you would sitting. So. instantly slump over. <laughs> All right, there's a, the last sip. I'll say that sip is gone. This podcast is done. Dom, thanks for coming on. Hope to have you on a lot more. Uh, yeah, thanks for up, having me, brother. Lining up some more, so... Uh, thank you guys for listening. Have a good day.